a play within a play within a play, absurd couples therapy, and the search for Denver's next Tiny Tim. It's November 3rd, 2009. I'm Charlie Miller, and this is 10 Minutes to Curtain. Hey everyone, I hope you had a happy Halloween. A lot of us at the Denver Center spent our Halloween inside of a dark theater, preparing for the next show of the season, Well by Lisa Crone. The segment you're about to see deals with Well, a play about the creation of a play. It's self-aware, what we like to call meta-theatrical. Because of this, I was inspired to create a 10 minutes to curtain segment that mirrors the structure of the play, to give you a sense of the play by imitating the play itself. It's complicated, I know, but bear with me because it's going to be an interesting theatrical exploration. We start with Kathy Brady. Well, Well is a, is a brilliantly crafted piece of chaos. <laughs> it's a story about Lisa, me, and my lifelong relationship with my mother and with wellness and illness and my mother's wellness and illness. The only thing I've been able to come up with um, to explain this particular piece is that it's like an artichoke. And it starts out as a, as a full, beautiful, large artichoke. And the leaves keep getting peeled away until the heart appears. Lisa Crone is a writer of One Woman Plays. And this piece is very autobiographical. In this piece, she decides to introduce other characters. So my mother is on stage with me. Her mother doesn't quite understand the rules. It unravels people breaking character, my mother interrupting, my mother telling stuff that I had planned for later in the play. It's sort of sabotaged throughout. No one's trying to sabotage it. Well, life happens. And that's the great fun of it. This seems perfectly clear to me, Charlie. I'm already interested in the play and I would buy a ticket. Why are you making this so complicated? Mom, don't worry, it'll all come together in the end. I don't know. Charlie, you listen to your mother, she knows what she's talking about. See? Charlie, I think your mom's right. I mean, I knew what you were trying to do, but now I, I'm, I'm kind of at sea. Um, you might need to rethink this. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this is going to sell the show, Charlie. Um, I think it, I don't know, I think it's much funnier than this. It, it's a really funny show. Well, I think the audience is going to love that, that the episode's structure follows the play structure. There's a play within the play within the play, and you've captured that beautifully. Yeah, but you know, I mean, how many layers do you need to confuse the audience? I think if they're confused before they come in the theater, we've got a problem. Charlie, you need to rethink. i got to tell you, Kent is right. Uh, yeah, I know, and he's the big cheese, so, you know, he's right about everything. But he really is right about this. What are you thinking? Charlie, you've got to start over. You Charlie, just gotta you should listen to your boss. To you you've got to let this go. Life. You could lose your job um, and your health insurance. I'm going to go, OK? You know, yeah. Uh, I think Mom and daughter fighting. So it's fun on stage. No, good I mean, it's just good. And you'll get a play really? within a play. Oh, good luck. Forget everything you just saw. Just come and see the show. You'll have a good time. Anyway, we'll move on to our next show, Absurd Person Singular, Alan Akeborn's adult Christmas tale about three parties gone hilariously wrong. We all know how stressful the holidays can be, and it's especially bad for the three couples in this show. I got to sit in on their counseling sessions and want to give you a glimpse of their absurd world in On the Couch. So tell me, why have we decided to come back to therapy? We thought we'd come in for a little Pick me Tune up. up. Oh, yeah, you picked me up. There yeah. you go. Just a little checking in. Yes. How have you been doing? It's going great. We're really, really happy. Making any progress on those issues we talked about before? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going pretty well, I think, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Sometimes things get a bit tense here and there. Um. Where do you experience the most severe stress in your time together? Yeah, there's a certain tensions that develop over the holidays. To be perfectly honest. I like to have fun. Well, I do too. That's not the issue. Well, you know, having a party can, it can 
little stressful, but we'll make the most of it. Or that little mistletoe hanging everywhere. Yeah, right, mistletoe. Great, I don't want to tell you something about him. It's no, I just a, like the smell of mistletoe. No, you're always I under, love it. You, you love the smell under no, the mistletoe. No, I love the way it defines space. It always hangs, you know, above you, usually in a doorway, framed. Meeting new people. Yes. Important people. Yes, I, 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 I can't get nervous. I, I. <sighs> Let's get it out there. Put it right out on the table. You know, I like to go out. I like to go out and be social, have a drink now and then. Social. Is that After what you work, call it? I'm just enjoying my life. Social. With my friends, social. Eva. Yeah, with is your this, girlfriends. This, can you tell me, is this unhealthy your for me to have it's always an your individual, girlfriends. independent oh, life? Sorry, I must have something in my eye, Sydney. Yes, yeah, that time of year, you know, there's lots of uh, <sighs> pollen and such. Yes, oh, the Christmas mm. trees. Let it all out. Ronnie thinks I drink too much. He's well, worried. D don't you? I've never had an automobile accident. But you don't drive. The spruces are blooming. Oh, yes. Every night, another pill, another pill, numb, numb, numb. I, I don't think you hear me anymore. I just can't take it anymore. Anyway, I love the holidays. I think they're great. <clears throat> Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. I've just got another little thing here. I can't just take it anymore, you know, Jeffrey. I'm Hold on. Look, just get a grip. It's the holiday season. Go out to the parties. Pretend nothing is wrong. Just have a good time, and I'll see you next year. Now for a more family-friendly holiday show, we turn to everyone's favorite A Christmas Carol. Last month, the theater company held auditions for the children's roles in the show, and I got to film the action. So here it is, straight from the director's notepad, an exclusive look at what it takes to be Denver's next Tiny Tim. Test them for retention and volume. <laughs> Basically, they have one line in the play that they say twice. This will be very humiliating for all of us, but we're going to have them try to walk as though one of their legs is not functioning properly. This one. Which is your okay? Good. Everybody, try it. Mine's going across. Okay, we have to make it not look like skipping so much. This is hard. It's hard. I'm going to walk around and stuff, but I don't want you to look at me at all. This is a concentration test, okay? Time was when I was young, and Christmas Day was like a magic ring around the world. And Christmas is a time to dream of the things that are to be. That was really good, Connor. Good listening and concentration. You all did that really well. pretty excited about our new Tiny Tim, and in just a brief interview, I found him to be wise well beyond his five and a half years. So for this month's Your Turn, I want you to submit questions to ask the Denver Center's tiniest actor. Your questions can be about the show, about life in general, or anything in between. Submit your ideas to 10 minutes at dcpa.org, and I will feature an exclusive interview with your questions in next month's episode. That's all for November. Tune in the first Tuesday in December for a new episode of 10 Minutes to Curtain. I'll see you in the theater.